Nine members of the so-called Black Liberation Army were indicted in New York today for a series of attacks on policemen. The charges against them include murder, assault, and robbery. The FBI said today it has uncovered a terror conspiracy, a conspiracy involving all the major underground leftist organizations in the United States. The FBI revelation apparently prompted by a series of recent shootouts with members of the Weathermen and the Black Liberation Army groups. The Bureau has now ordered a nationwide hunt for four fugitives it describes as extremely dangerous. They will kill people to attain their ends. And what are their ends? Their ultimate ends have to be the overthrow of a democratic government as we know it to be. At one point considered by the FBI to be the most dangerous terrorist group in America, the Black Liberation Army occupies a controversial place in the struggle for black power. However, the actions of the BLA cannot be understood in isolation. They must be located within the broader context of several hundred years of violent racial oppression and black resistance. In the most literal sense, the precursor to the Black Liberation Army was the Revolutionary Action Movement. Formed in 1962 by Donald Freeman, Wanda Marshall, and Ahmed Muhammad, Ram combined Maoism with revolutionary black nationalism. Ram took inspiration from other communist and nationalist struggles, namely the Chinese and Cuban revolutions. Following the teachings of Chairman Mao Zedong, Ram leaders believed the only pathway to black liberation was a violent revolution or a protracted people's war. By 1967, Ram had begun organizing the black urban subproletariat into a paramilitary force called the Black Guards. The Black Guards were a proto-guerrilla formation engaging in clashes with police forces and operating primarily as a defense army. At its peak, Ram had thousands organized into a black nationalist army, with 1,000 units in Cleveland alone. Ram understood that in order for its militancy to be truly effective, it had to be connected to a broader above-ground political organization. In fact, before the assassination of Malcolm X, Ram was planning to function as the underground counterpart to Malcolm's organization of Afro-American unity. The downfall of Ram occurred in 1969, as a combination of intense governmental repression, leadership disputes, and the growth of other black nationalist groups such as the Black Panthers forced Ram to dissolve. Many members joined the Black Panther Party or the Republic of New Africa, and much of the remaining organizational infrastructure was absorbed by the Republic of New Africa. The Black Liberation Army is often officially recognized as being formed in 1970, but an exact date is hard to determine since the BLA was never a centralized organization, but was instead a decentralized network of various cadres and organizers. Following much of the same strategy and ideology of the Revolutionary Action Movement, the BLA was never meant to be its own unique political entity. It was always envisioned as the clandestine wing of a broader black nationalist mass movement. Kwame Tori explained that the role of the guerrilla movement is to quote, back up the demands of the above-ground political organization, unquote. The BLA is often associated with the Black Panther Party, and for good reason. Many members of the BLA and BPP worked under the assumption that the BLA was to act as the illegal wing of the Panthers. Many members of the BLA were Panthers themselves that had been forced underground by police repression, and BLA cadres often viewed themselves as extensions of the party and enforcing their demands. However, the relationship between the Black Liberation Army and the Black Panther Party was strained and controversial. Although leaders of the Black Panthers, such as Huey Newton, understood and openly called for the creation of an underground wing of the party, they often balked at serious attempts to establish such a formation. For a brief time, Panther newspapers encouraged party members to join the BLA, but soon backtracked. Factions emerged in the party between those that called for an intensification of underground activity and those that wanted this struggle to remain legal for the time being. Federal operatives and informants intentionally inflamed this disagreement, and in 1971, the Oakland-based national leadership, led by Huey Newton, expelled many members of the militant faction, including its leader, Eldridge Cleaver, and hundreds more quit the party, labeling Newton and the national leadership as a reformist and adventurist. Most of the expelled Panthers went directly into the underground and joined the BLA, and as a result, BLA actions actually intensified after the split. Despite no longer being associated with the Black Panthers, the BLA still operated as a militant wing of the black liberation struggle. They engaged in political assassinations, police killings, bombings, and robberies. It must be understood that these were not random acts of violence designed to inflict terror onto a broader population. Rather, they were all specifically targeted and planned with concrete goals in mind. Political assassinations were responses to the arrests or murder of black activists, and it forced state forces to ease the repression of the movement. Cops with a reputation for being brutal were targeted and killed, which in turn forced precincts to adopt less brutal methods or to withdraw from certain communities entirely. 
The BLA is credited with the killing of over 20 police officers in this span. Bombings of police stations served a similar purpose, and the bombing of army barracks and corporate headquarters disrupted the U.S. war machine and its beneficiaries. The BLA used bank robberies to fund other revolutionary organizations, and it is estimated that they supplied several million dollars to other black liberation groups between 1970 and 1981. The militancy of the Black Liberation Army brought down intense scrutiny and repression from the American government. Without a powerful above-a-ground organization to supply and aid them, the BLA was unable to withstand such a heavy backlash, eventually leading to their downfall. Slowly but surely, BLA leaders were arrested, killed, or forced to flee the country. One of the BLA's most prominent leaders and figures, Asada Shakur, was arrested in 1973 for the alleged killing of a New Jersey police officer, along with another BLA leader, Sundiati Akoli. Several mass arrests were made in 1973 and 74 that forced the organization deeper and deeper underground. Asada escaped from prison in 1979, and a massive manhunt went out for her arrest, forcing her to seek asylum in Cuba. A failed brink truck robbery in 1981 resulted in further arrests, and BLA activity virtually ceased as a result. The destruction of the Black Liberation Army marked a turn away from militancy within the Black Liberation Movement and with it came a harsh criticism of the violent tactics employed by the BLA and its allies. The BLA were labeled as terrorists, employing senseless and immoral violence to achieve their ends. To this, the BLA members have their response. In the words of Asada Shakur, nobody in the world, nobody in history, has ever gotten their freedom by appealing to the moral sense of the people who are oppressing them. Former Black Panther Party Field Marshal and BLA leader Don Cox has this to say. Sometimes we are trapped by the rhetoric of the slave master. In our 400 year struggle for survival, it has been the guns and force manifested in the racist military that occupy our communities that directly oppress, repress, brutalize, and murder us. So for us to talk about survival, we must talk about self-defense against this brutality and murder that is defined by the racist power structure as quote unquote, justifiable homicide. So. When a guerrilla unit moves against this oppressive system by executing a pig or attacking its institutions by any means, sniping, stabbing, bombing, etc., in defense against the 400 years of racist brutality, murder, and exploitation, this can only be defined correctly as self-defense. The slave master, however, through his lackeys, puppets, and apologists, calls it terrorism, the work of crazed men, criminals, insane killers. The violent tactics of the Black Liberation Army can only be understood as a reaction to the violence being imposed daily upon the black community. These tactics failed, not because of the impracticality or immorality of violence, but rather because the black vanguard was unable to muster a great enough capacity of violence to counter the towering monstrosity of racial capitalism. Had the Panthers and Black Liberation Army avoided certain strategic errors, history might have been very different. Unfortunately, we cannot change the past. All we can do is learn from their success and failures. Pick up the pieces and try again. We say, we always say the Black Panther Party that they can do anything they want to us. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolutionary. And you're going to have to keep on saying that. You're going to have to say that I am a proletarian. I am the people. I'm not the pig. You've got to make a distinction. And the people are going to have to attack the pig. The people are going to have to stand up against the pig. That's what the pastors are doing. That's what the pastors are doing all over the world.